Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another devotional time with N.T. Wright. My name is David Fullen, and I am the pastor of the Drakesboro United Methodist Church and the Jurgens Chapel United Methodist Church. And on behalf of the people of these churches, I welcome you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I pray that the Lord would open our eyes, that we could see his truth, that he would open our hearts so that there's a place within us where that truth can dwell and grow and flourish. I ask you to follow in your Bibles, if you'd like, with the focused reading today on Luke 4, verses 14 through 30. And if you'd like the larger reading, that is Luke 4, chapter 4. Uh, this is the Wednesday of the first week of Lent, the first full week of Lent. Just a week ago, today, we were celebrating Ash Wednesday. Here is the scripture from N.T. Wright, the uh, focused reading, Luke 4, verses 14 through 30. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. Word about him went out throughout the whole district. He taught in their synagogues and gained a great reputation all around. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. On the Sabbath, as was his regular practice, he went in to the synagogue and stood up to read. They gave him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to tell the poor the good news. He has sent me to announce release to the prisoners and sight to the blind, to set the wounded victims free, to announce the year of God's special favor. He rolled up the scroll, gave it to the attendant, and sat down. All eyes in the synagogue were focused on him. Today, he began. This scripture is fulfilled in your own hearing. Everyone remarked at him. They were astonished at the words coming out of his mouth, words of sheer grace. Isn't this Joseph's son, they said? I know that you're going to say, Jesus said, you're going to tell me the old riddle. Heal yourself, doctor. We heard of great happenings in Capernaum. Do things like that here in your own country. Let me tell you the truth, he went on. Prophets never get accepted in their own country. This is the solemn truth. There were plenty of widows in Israel in the time of Elijah when heaven was shut up for three years and six months and there was a great famine over all the land. Elijah was sent to none of them, only to a widow in the Sidonian town of Zarephath. And there were plenty of people with virulent skin diseases in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them were healed, only Naaman, the Syrian, when they heard this, everyone in the synagogue flew into a rage. They got up and threw him out of town. They took him to the top of the mountain on which the town was built, meaning to fling him off. 
but he slipped through the middle of them and went away. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Now here is the reflection by N.T. Wright. Everyone wants to serve God, declared the poster outside the church, but only in an advisory capacity. We all know what we want God to do. We are not so good at bringing our hopes and intentions into line with what God has in mind. This was never more graphically illustrated than when Jesus, having begun his work of launching God's kingdom elsewhere, came back to his hometown. Not only did everybody know him and his family, always a tricky situation, they knew what, if he really was bringing God's kingdom, he ought to be doing. Imagine yourself that Sabbath morning standing at the back of the synagogue with this young man, apparently some kind of prophet, sitting down in the teacher's chair. As a teacher, I've always rather liked the idea of sitting down and having the audience stand up, but I doubt it would catch on these days. That's the setting in the Jewish synagogue. The main thing you know is that you and your people are in a big mess, and it's time God sorted it out. Anyone claiming to be a prophet, let alone quoting the scriptures and saying they're all coming true, ought to be telling us how God will rescue his own poor people, sort out the bad characters, and smash the heathen invaders to smithereens. That is how it's supposed to work. That is what God is meant to be doing. But look at what happens next. This young would-be prophet is talking about grace, about the year of God's favor. Well, that's fine. We know about the Jubilee, the time when everyone is to be released from all their debts. Maybe it's time we did it once for all and more thoroughly. But he's talking about God doing it for everybody. The wicked and the pagans are going to be let off as well. We can't have that. Who does he think he is? He deserves to be lynched. Are you angry? You should be. He's just stood all your good, sound advice on its head. Unfortunately, God tends to do that. Jesus himself tended to do that. God is turning the whole world upside down. That means he's turning your whole world upside down as well. Today, as we allow a scene like this to wash over us, we will sometimes hear the disturbing question when we know only too clearly what God ought to be doing are we prepared to take a second opinion, God's opinion? Our prayer today, Sovereign Lord, teach me to listen to you, even when you're saying things I badly don't want to hear. Amen. Thank you for joining me, brothers and sisters. I look forward to our time tomorrow morning. May God bless you and keep you.